going to go through a series of calculations similar to those in the second part of the hydrolysis and buffer slab. What we're going to do is we're going to start by making a buffer solution. And to make this buffer solution, we're going to mix a solution of weak acid with another solution of a strong base. Then what we're going to do is we're going to divide that buffer solution into parts. And we're going to do something different with each part. So let's begin. For our demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to take 30 milliliters of a 10th molar benzoic acid solution and we're going to mix it with 15 milliliters of a 10th molar sodium hydroxide solution. In essence, what you can think about this is it's a partial titration. We have not added enough sodium hydroxide to neutralize off all of the benzoic acid. So we can start by looking up the Ka for benzoic acid. Now, according to the Burge book, the Ka for benzoic acid is 6.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, and the pKa is 4.19. Now, let's write out a net ionic reaction that takes place when I mix sodium hydroxide with benzoic acid, and that looks like this. We write the benzoic acid as being associated, since it's a weak acid, and the majority of the acid exists in that form in solution and we combine that with a strong base and the sodium ion in this case is a spectator ion. So the net reaction would be that we would combine benzoic acid with sodium hydroxide to make water and sodium benzoate. But what we're interested in is the, the species in this solution that would contribute to the pH. And the sodium ion is simply a spectator ion. So the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to figure out how many millimoles each of benzoic acid are we starting with and of sodium hydroxide. So we do that by simply multiplying the volume in milliliters by the molarity. And what we get is 3 millimoles of benzoic acid and 1.5 millimoles of sodium hydroxide. So if we mix these two things together, what we're going to see is that in this case, the sodium hydroxide is our limiting reactant. So it's completely consumed and it's going to take with it the exact same amount of benzoic acid since it's a one-to-one -one reaction and it's going to form 1.5 millimoles each of water and benzoate ion. And that's what we have here. So if we tally this up we end up with a solution that contains 1.5 millimoles of benzoic acid and also 1.5 millimoles of benzoate ion. Now I've ignored the millimoles of water that have formed because there's a whole bunch of water in there already as the solvent. So what kind of solution is this? You see that we have significant quantities of both conjugate acid and conjugate base, and that would make this solution a buffer. And that means what we can do is we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the pH of this buffer. Now the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation says that pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the conjugate acid. If we look at both of these components of our buffer, the conjugate base and the conjugate acid, the number of millimoles is the same. The volume of the solution is the same. So we can calculate their concentration simply by dividing the number of millimoles of each by the total volume. We have one and a half millimoles of each. The volume is 45 milliliters, 30 from the original acid solution and 15 from the added base. We assume the volume is additive. So, we get 0 0.0333 molar. We plug that in to our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And since the concentrations of both the conjugate acid and the conjugate base are the same, the log term is 0, so the pH is simply equal to the pKa of the weak acid. And this is something that's really important to memorize. Another thing you can think about as far as this goes is what we've done is we've done a half titration. If we wanted to titrate off all of the benzoic acid, we would have to add 3 millimoles of sodium hydroxide. We've added exactly half that, and what that does is it gives us a one-to-one -one buffer. So at half the equivalence point for a titration, the pH is equal to pKa. Now there is a shortcut that we can take here, and it's a worthwhile one to look at because it saves you a little bit of time, and that is, since the volume of the solution is the same for both the conjugate acid and the conjugate base, we can simply plug in the ratio of millimoles of each 
into the henderson hasselbach equation and solve for the pH of our buffer that way. It just saves us a step, or it actually would save us two steps if we have different millimoles each of conjugate acid and conjugate base. So what we can also do is simply plug in the ratio of millimoles of conjugate base to conjugate acid. And that's what I'm going to do for all subsequent calculations that involve a buffer. And once again, if we do that here, we get exactly the same answer. The pH of our buffer is 4.19. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to divide this buffer up into four 10 milliliter portions. That's going to leave five milliliters extra, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to end up adding something different to each of the 10 milliliter portions. So let's begin with that. So if we take a 10 milliliter portion of our buffer, how much conjugate acid and conjugate base are present in there? You'll agree with me at this point that those, those amounts are equal because we're taking it from the buffer than from the previous slide. So what we can do is we can set up a simple proportion. We can say, all right, what fraction of the buffer are we taking? We're taking 10 of the 45 for each sample. We multiply that by the 1.5 millimoles that were in the original buffer. And what that gives us is 0.33 millimoles each of conjugate acid and conjugate base in each 10 milliliter portion of the buffer that we have. So now what we're going to do in the next slide is we're going to take the first 10 milliliter portion and treat it with some strong acid. So we take a 10 milliliter portion of our buffer and we add to it a tenth of a milliliter of one molar nitric acid. And what we want to do is figure out what the pH of this buffer is going to be after the acid is added. So the first thing we're going to do again is we're going to write a net ionic equation and what we have to think about is what is the acid going to do? It's going to react with the conjugate base in the buffer. So we take the hydrogen ion from the acid and combine it with the conjugate base, benzoate ion, to make benzoic acid. Now let's look at this. To start with in our buffer we, we know that we have 0.33 millimoles each benzoate ion and benzoic acid and we're adding 0.1 milliliter of a one molar solution of hydrogen ion which gives us a tenth of a millimole of hydrogen ion. So that's what we're starting with. Now once again we identify our, our limiting reactant. In this case it is the hydrogen ion. So the hydrogen ion is the limiting reactant and therefore it will be completely consumed and it will take with it a tenth of a millimole of the benzoate ion and produce a tenth of a millimole more of the benzoic acid. The net result is that we have a solution now that contains 0.23 millimoles of benzoate ion and 0.43 millimoles of the benzoic acid. Since we have appreciable quantities both of conjugate base and conjugate acid, once again we have a buffer. Now, the pH of this buffer versus the buffer in the, the second slide is going to be different because we've changed the ratio of millimoles of conjugate base to conjugate acid. We can plug this into our henderson hasselbach equation remembering that the pKa for benzoic acid is 4.19. And so what we get is 4.19 plus the log of 0.23 divided by 0.43 and that gives us a pH of 3.92. Now we have added acid to this buffer, so it's reasonable to expect the pH of this buffer to go down. Now let's move on to the next 10 milliliter portion. In this one, what we're going to do is we're going to add the same amount of a much stronger nitric acid solution. So instead of using one molar nitric acid like we did in the previous example, now we're going to use six molar nitric acid. Once again, the reaction that takes place is exactly the same. The difference lies in the number of millimoles of hydrogen ion that we've added. Now, the benzoate ion is the limiting reactant here, and all of it will be consumed. And so what we're left with is a solution that contains 0.27 millimoles of hydrogen ion and 0.66 millimoles of benzoic acid. Now we, all, we have two things here. We have a strong acid and a weak acid, and technically they both 
would contribute to the pH of this solution. However, the strong acid is, is really going to dominate this. So what we're going to do to determine the pH of this solution is we're going to treat this as a strong acid solution. Another way of looking at this is because we've added a tremendous amount of strong acid, what we've done is we've broken the buffer. We no longer have a solution that's buffered. And therefore, what we would expect is, since we've added an excess of acid, that the pH would go down quite markedly. So let's see what happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the concentration of hydrogen ion. And to do this, we're going to take the millimoles of excess hydrogen ion, which is 0.27, and we're going to divide it by the total volume of this solution. We have 10 milliliters initially, and we add another 0 0.10 milliliters. So to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration, 0.27 millimoles divided by 10.10 milliliters, and that gives us a concentration of 0 0.027 molar. Now all we have to do is take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration to get the pH, and the pH calculates to be 1.57. So indeed it has dropped markedly, and that, that's something we would expect having added an, enough acid to break the buffer. To our third 10 milliliter portion, what we're going to do now is add some sodium hydroxide solution. In this case, we're going to add a tenth of a milliliter of one molar sodium hydroxide. Now, first of all, the net ionic equation that takes place is going to be different. Instead of our stressor reacting with conjugate base, as it has in the previous two examples, now it's going to react with conjugate acid. So the reaction looks exactly the same for the first reaction in the, first, the very first example we showed. So, we start off with a buffer that contains 0.33 millimoles of benzoic acid and another 0.33 millimoles of benzoate ion. We're going to add this time a tenth of a mole of hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion is the limiting reactant, so it's consumed along with a tenth of a millimole of the benzoic acid. We form a tenth of a millimole of the benzoate ion. We also form a tenth of a millimole of water, although that doesn't really matter as far as our calculations are concerned. So the net result is now we, can, we have a solution that contains 0.23 millimoles of benzoic acid and 0.43 millimoles of benzoate ion. We have a buffer because the amounts of the conjugate acid and conjugate base are both appreciable in this solution. So once again, we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to solve for the pH of the buffer. pH is equal to 4.19 plus the log of 0.43 which is the millimoles of conjugate base divided by 0.23, which is the millimoles of conjugate acid. That gives us a pH of 4.46. Adding hydroxide ion to this buffer will raise the pH, and that's what we see here. It doesn't go up by a lot, but it does go up somewhat. To our last 10 milliliter portion, what we're going to do is we're going to add concentrated sodium hydroxide. So we're going to, instead of a tenth of a milliliter of one molar, now we're going to use a tenth of a milliliter of six molar sodium hydroxide. Once again, we can write out the net ionic equation. And once again, we're starting with 0.33 millimoles each of benzoic acid and benzoate ion. So the next question is, how many millimoles of hydroxide ion do we have? And that, that calculates out to six tenths of a millimole. So here, the benzoic acid is consumed. And just like with the strong nitric acid, what we end up doing is we end up breaking the buffer because we consume all of our conjugate acid. And we end up with a solution that contains a mixture of hydroxide ion and only conjugate base. Now, just like with the acid example, we've broken the buffer the dominating feature in this is going to be the hydroxide ion as far as the pH is concerned. So we're going to treat this solution as a strong base. Therefore what we need to do is we need to calculate the concentration of hydroxide ion. And to do that we simply take the millimoles of hydroxide ion and divide by the total volume of the solution. We have 0.27 millimoles of hydroxide ion. We divide that by the total volume, which again is 10.10 milliliters, we get 0.027 molar, 
we calculate the pOH as being 1.57 and we calculate the pH simply from subtracting that 1.57 from 14 and we get 12.43 so this solution is very basic as we would expect so what we have done in this set of slides is we've we've made a buffer by mixing a weak acid with a strong base we've divided that buffer into portions and done something different to each portion this is very similar to what you're going to do in the second part of the hydrolysis and buffer slide